Hi, I'm Jean Shaproff and I'm on a mission. Anyone can be a philanthropist. My television show came from my book, Successful Philanthropy, How to Make a Life by What You Give. Won't you join me? Welcome to Successful Philanthropy. I'm your host, Jean Shafaroff. This show is designed to highlight the work of philanthropic leaders here in the United States and then beyond. Today's guest, a true Renaissance man, his name, Milan Breton. He is a fashion designer, a performer, and an ambassador. I don't think there's anything that Milan can't do or doesn't do. Let's all welcome Milan Breton. Milan, first, let's talk a little bit about your fashion line. Oh, thank you, Jean. And thank you so much for having me today. Uh, the fashion collection itself started about 15 years ago. Um, I was performing, uh, doing some work with ESPN at the time as the voice of ESPN Extreme Sports. And um, I have always loved fashion. My grandmother was a uh, couture client to many people uh, in Paris. And uh, I was very inspired by her clothing and how it was made and constructed. And I met a gentleman by the name of Arnold Scazi at that time. And he had a sit down conversation with me and asked me what I would like to do with my life at that point. And I said, I would really like to do, um, to expand my brand into fashion. And so I started my collection about six months after I started working for him. Well, I apprenticed for him. I didn't quite work for him, but um, but I, uh, but after that launched the collection and had a very successful launch at New York Fashion Week. And um, 15 years later, we're in men's, women's, fragrance, jewelry, accessories, shoes, uh, the collections all over the world. And we've, dressed everyone from celebrities, royals, also so grateful to have you as a client, Jean. And, um, and yeah, it's, it's been a very, uh, very exciting and wonderful journey for me. Yes, and I remember Arnold Scarzi. I used to buy some of his clothing and now I buy a lot of Milan Breton's clothing. Oh, Today, you. I happen to be wearing a jacket from Milan Breton's collection and Milan, Tell us a little bit about some of the celebrities that you've designed for, and then the royalty in England. Okay. Um, I, my first celebrity client was actually Ariana Grande and Minnie Driver. Those were the first two that I worked with when I launched the collection. And also Frankie Grande, who's the brother of Ariana Grande. Uh, they're very dear friends to me for many, many years. And um, so I started... Uh, basically in a very uh, tight group of up and coming talent that have actually kind of expanded around the world. Um, and I've worked with everyone from um, Michael Bublé to Celine Dion. We've dressed um, Kerry Washington, quite a few, few A-list celebrities, but we've also dressed a lot of royals. We've dressed uh, royalty from Monaco, royalty from the UK, um, also, I've worked with many uh, clients in, that are royalty in Bahrain and also in Saudi Arabia as well. Yes, and Vogue spoke about you being a secret. And what is that all about? Um, they released a story about a year ago calling me the, um, the most... Uh, the most influential de designer that you've never heard of. And... Uh, I think for me, that was a very touching moment because to have Vogue acknowledge you that way, it was very, um, it was very, very much something you work towards as a designer in your career. And, and though I have many, many facets to my careers, um, to be acknowledged by them was a tremendous honor. And, and to be acknowledged at that at, with those words was quite lovely. Yes, when Vogue calls you the most influential designer, I think that's a very big deal because Vogue is an enormously powerful force in the fashion industry. And Anna Wintour really has done an extraordinary job with Vogue. And so when she gives you your blessing, you know you've, you really have made it. Oh, Alana, yes, and you have. That is wonderful. And Thank I, you so much. I, 
Yes, and now I want to tell our audience a little bit about some of the titles you hold. You are an ambassador of tourism to the entire world from the country of Taiwan, and then you've been appointed by parliament in the United Kingdom where you reside to be the ambassador of the arts. And tell our audience a little bit about those uh, positions you hold and what it entails. Oh, thank I would imagine you. it's quite a bit of work and quite a bit of responsibility. It is. It's a, it's a tremendous honor and quite a bit of uh, work that we put into the arts, especially in the UK. Um, the Parliamentary Society for Arts, Sports and Fashion deals directly with entertainment, it also deals with fashion, and it also deals with um, all of the creative elements that happen in the UK itself. I myself have a, a lot more um, going on with the fashion side of it. So I'm dealing with sustainable fashion issues. I'm also dealing with um, uh, manufacturing issues, things like that throughout the world. And we create initiatives that help other designers also, the up and coming designers, and um, designers throughout all of Europe um, to develop their brands and, and to teach them where to get the, the items made and, and how to have them shipped properly and things that will actually be good for the earth. So you're really helping a lot of people uh, yeah. through that work. And regarding Taiwan, I would imagine that the tourism business is very slow right now because of COVID. I, I can't imagine too many people traveling back and forth to ta Taiwan. And so for Taiwan, is, is tourism on hold right now? Well, at this time, I would say yes. Um, because of COVID and because Taiwan has been a very um, safe place regarding the issues with this pandemic. They've actually took action quite early in the process and have not had any new cases since the end of April, um, which is phenomenal. But in order to keep that, um, to keep the island secure, they've, they've required anyone traveling into the, com into the country uh, that is not there for um, business related to government or, or medical uh, to quarantine for 14 days in two hotels that they have in Taiwan. And you can't leave the hotel, uh, meals are brought to you, um, you have testing done often, things like that. So it's, I think that tourism will, I think the tourism industry of Taiwan, it will probably open itself back up in late 2021, once we know the world is a much safer place. And now that the vaccine is available throughout the world, um, I think it'll give an opportunity for people to see Taiwan again. And Taiwan is such a beautiful country. It's, um, it's a, an island that is, on the east, you have the Taipei area city, and then, I'm sorry, on the west, you have Taipei and the city. And then on the east, you have um, the beautiful islands and the indigenous groups of people and things like that that are quite celebrated in Taiwan. And um, there's a special island in Taiwan, if you ever have a chance to go there, it's called Orchid Island. And there's a tribe there called the Tao tribe, and they're an indigenous tribe and they live basically as one with the earth and everything they eat, everything they build um, is very sustainable. And it's, um, and the people there are so generous and they're so kind and loving. Uh, we had an opportunity to go and to meet the mayor of the, the island and it was, it was quite lovely. It sounds like an amazing place to go and I hope to get to Taiwan one day. I don't think it will happen in 2021, but maybe in 2022. And Milan, I remember about one year ago, last November 2019, I was in London and we had dinner, you and I, and then a friend. And what has happened to your life since the COVID-19 pandemic erupted and how has it changed your life, your day-to-day -day life, and then your career? Well, I would say that the COVID, the pandemic itself has actually changed quite a bit in the fashion industry. I would say business has been a bit slower. People are, are 
not going out as much. They're not wearing as much of the evening wear and the gowns and things like that. Um, I think that people are also, um, they're also looking at their homes as a kind of uh, more of a temple rather than going to, you know, out to work every day and things like that. So they're really spending time decorating their homes spend time with their families, things like that. For myself, it's been very different because I used to travel every two weeks and I would travel all over Europe or I would travel to Asia or come to New York. And um, my travel schedule is completely changed now. We're not doing as much traveling. And if we do travel, it's very, very safely. Um, I, um, I also have noticed that the arts in general, and as an ambassador to the arts, um, that has changed tremendously. The West End, Broadway, um, all of the fashion shows were very different this last season. Many were just on uh, on video rather than being live fashion shows, which we've done for many, many years. And it changes the way people shop. It changes the way people respond to fashion. It changes the way that um, that we interact with one another because we now no longer have the opportunity to give each other a hug or to like just basic simple things that I think we often took for granted. Um, I've also noticed um, there's been a tremendous amount of loss as well and I myself have lost quite a few. Excuse me, but I understand you lost quite a few friends, is that correct? Yeah, a lot of the people that I've known in the entertainment industry um, have been lost and Two of my mentors, uh, I was once a dancer and um, two of my mentors have also been, been lost to COVID. So I'm, 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 uh, it's, been, it's been a very um, personal situation, the pandemic as well. And sorry if I get a bit emotional, it's just I, I tend to build very close relationships with people and it's, um, it's, uh, it's hard to, to see. Okay. Well, it's heartbreaking to lose friends for sure. And I can say personally, although I haven't lost any friends, this whole pandemic has been a life changing experience. I was someone who went out to galas four and five times a week in New York City, charity galas, and I traveled constantly. And now I'm home most of the time. And it is a tremendous time for reflection. And as a fashion lover and um, also a philanthropist, everything is different. We now have no in-person charity galleries. Everything is virtual. Regarding fashion, occasionally I get dressed up for some of the virtual galas. I'll put on a gown or I'll wear a pretty short dress. But for the most part, we're in sweatpants or we're in leggings and workout clothing or pajamas. So life is very different. Now, Milan, you also are an entertainer and I understand you've just come out with a new song with uh, Consuela Vanderbilt, a mutual friend of ours. And can you tell us a little bit about your uh, life as a performer, because it's so fascinating that you are able to do so many different things. And this is why I call you a true Renaissance man. Oh, thank you, Jean. Thank you. I began performing at the age of uh, five years old, but I actually started training in music at three and a half. I, I learned the piano when I was about three and a half years old. And then I started dancing when I was five. I started performing um, at the age of seven. And then uh, basically, I ended up in New York. I've, I've done many, many shows in New York. We've also launched a whole music side of my, my business as well. And, and I have a film production company also. I've directed a, a documentary that was about Taiwan that um, was in contingency for the Academy Award and also won the New York International Film Festival Award for Best Short Film. Um, and I've also, uh, we're also in contingency this year for the Academy Award for a production that I did in June called Immortal that was uh, fashion and um, artificial intelligence and virtual reality production. And it's, uh, it's in contingency as well. Um, but for music, I've always loved singing. I trained in opera as a young boy and, um, and I kind of took that training into theater. And then I also took it into sort of a jazz pop kind of realm. And right before the 
lot, the first lockdown in March in London, I released a single called Something Stupid, which is a remake of Frank Sinatra and Nancy Sinatra's song. And uh, it charted top 10 all over Europe and top 50 in the UK. And, and it's been very exciting. The single that we did with Consuelo has been a very, um, it's been a very exciting journey because we've, she recorded her part in New York, I recorded mine in London, and then I came to New York to shoot the music video of the Vanderbilt Estate, and um, and the the uh, the proceeds for the song itself, um, we're giving, well, I'm giving 100% of my proceeds to Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS, and Consuelo's donating 100% of her proceeds to the Suffolk County Vanderbilt Museum, um, for restorations and, and upkeep of the museum itself. So it's been very exciting and I love the idea that I have this career in fashion, but I also am able to use my other talents to raise money for other organizations, which I've done for many organizations around the world, organizations from India, from the UK, France, South America, Central America, um, also in the US as well. And it's um, always been something that's very dear to me. You know, it's um, I re I'm really grateful that I've had the opportunities to give give back. No question. Those that have resources really have an obligation, in my opinion, and in most people's opinions, to do something. And especially now, as all of us live through a nightmare of a pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, here in the United States, we've seen... Uh, over 35 million people out of work at one point, unemployment very, very high, lines at food banks 10 times longer than in 2019, and people can't pay their rent. It's We're in a very tough situation. And so especially now, philanthropy is so important. And I'm so pleased to hear that you're involved in philanthropy, and I assume you give personally as well. Uh, not just uh, the money that you make, but if you're if you're making profit and you give all your profits, 100% of profits, well, very few businesses do that. And that is most honorable. And I have to say, uh, I admire you greatly for doing that. And if you want to speak a little bit more about your philanthropic efforts, we'd love to hear. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Jean. My, uh, my, Philanthropic efforts really began when I first came to New York in 1996. Um, I was introduced to one of the founders of an organization called Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS. And um, they have an event that they do every year. It's called Broadway Bears. And uh, the the man that was the first, the, the first director and the creator of the event is a man named Jerry Mitchell, who's directed Kinky Boots on Broadway and quite a few other productions. And um, I've had a very long-term friendship with him, and he he invited me to come work with him on this show called Broadway Bears that used to be held at um, at the uh, there was a uh, I forget the name of the hall on Fifty Fourth Street, but now it's done at Hammerstein Ballroom, and uh, they raise upwards of a million dollars each time that they have the event for um, for the different charities that Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS um, donates to as well, and. I, I've worked with them for about 15 years until I had my first uh, break on television where I was able to interact with the world. And um, I, you know, I've been on stages all my life. I've been, you know, performing all my life, but I, I never had that outreach. So the minute I was able to use that outreach of millions of people, I took what I had learned from this organization and decided to put it forth into other forms of charity work and I've worked with organizations regarding children all over the world and education and I actually have lectured at some of the top universities around the world as well um, to and mentored also to the students. Um, it's very important. I, I was I never officially trained in a fashion school. I was mentored by the best but I never really went to a fashion school um, so it's it's just very important to me that I give back to everything from students to the people that are less fortunate. Um, and also, especially at this time, I found, I mean, you mentioned the food banks as well. And, and I walked 
a bit through New York um, on a on a trip this last time, and uh, saw one of the food banks on 14th Street, and the the queue was all the way around the block. Actually, it was up the block and around the next block, actually. And um, I realized at that point how important it is for all of us that are able, I mean, even if we if we can't give money, if we're able to give our time to those people that need are in need right now, because it's such a, it's difficult because I, I've watched people in the entertainment world, especially because there's really like Broadway shut down, the West End is shut down. Um, I've watched the entertainment world basically well, I've just watched people that have been struggling so much. And, and that's why this song was so important that we were able to give back to this organization. And, and I, um, yeah, I, I hope that in some small way, what, it, what we're doing is helping, you know? I'm sure it is. And right now, I think all of us want to be of help. And most people, all of us can help. We can give our time we can give our knowledge and we can write a check and not uh, not all of us can write a big check but for those that can't even your small donations really matter milan you also uh, work to to inspire other people especially young people sounds like you work continually 24 7 i know i pretty much do i go to sleep i get up and the first thing i do put on that computer and start working and put on the phone. What do you do for fun? Do you have any fun or are you working 24 seven? It sounds like, I'm not sure. Oh, you know, I, I really quite, I really quite enjoy the, um, I quite enjoy the work that I'm doing in all fields. Uh, for fun, I, well, when I'm in the UK, I'll spend time with my friends in the royal family or I'll spend time with people that, um, our entertainers. Um, I have quite a few friends that are opera singers and and I quite enjoy opera, I quite enjoy music. And so for me to be able to sing, that's actually something that's very fun for me as well. And also I love the art of creating fashion and making others feel the most beautiful that they can. Um, I have a motto that I, I started with called wherever you go shine and it's not just about what you're wearing on the outside, it's what comes from the inside and shining through. And, and that's always been something very dear to me is giving people that opportunity to be their best. So important. And of course, you are probably not seeing very many friends right now with this pandemic. I know I'm a very social person and it's been a challenge because we really shouldn't be seeing a lot of people. We Here in the United States, the gatherings have to be very tiny right now, and we have to wear our masks, we have to social distance, and we have to keep washing our hands. And these rules are very important, and they're, they're all there for good reason. And Milan, you've been involved with uh, uh, this um, a Google... Um, Oh, Google Cameo. Google Cameo, yes. And tell us a little bit about the, that. I understand you were the first designer to be asked to do a Google cam Cameo. Is that correct? Yes, it's, it's an exciting new program through Google that actually gives the public an opportunity to get to know our work and, and the things that we do more personally. So we create these videos based on questions that Google asks us. And it's myself, Gordon Ramsay, um, there's quite a few other, um, other actors and models um, that are involved as well. And, and what we're doing is uh, they're asking us questions, well, myself, questions about fashion, about music, about all the things that I'm involved in. And um, I'm actually hoping to, um, uh, well, they send us 20 questions every, every week and we answer these questions. And I'm hoping that, um, in the future, some of those questions will also be involved with education and, uh, and philanthropy as well. So I can kind of spread the words that way also. And there are a lot of fun, the Google cameos. And Thank finally, you. Milan, this show is about inspiring the next generation. And what 
suggestions do you have to young people right now? Someone who may be out of work, may be very talented. What do you suggest to them right now? I think that some of the best creation that we do is when we're in a, a place that's not the most comfortable. And I think that like the ideas flow very often that way. And, and I think find what your branding is. We all have opportunities to use social media now, which is very exciting. And it's, it doesn't cost anything to do that, you know? Um, so it's, it's an opportunity for, it's, for you to create a brand. And then also look at what you're good at. Look at what you're able to do. If you're good at creating fashion, or if you're good at makeup, or if you're good at um, things that are a bit more like um, challenging with with intelligence and things like that as well. I'm, I'm not to say that those things are not challenging intelligently, but um, but say um, put those things on film and create a page and, and work very hard promoting yourself. And, and I mean, I think it, now it's so much about self-promotion. I mean, I think when I first started, we had so many publicists and marketing directors and things like that, which are also very important. But I think to start off, um, maybe if you have ideas, just put them out there, you know, and, and also work very hard to share them with your friends and, and be the face of your own, your own product. I like that. And I always say you have to believe in yourself and feel positive about what you are. And during this time of quiet, when most of us are, we're required to stay home, it's a great time to reflect and also to work on new projects and do new things. And, and so that's what many people are doing. And many people are creating new businesses, creating new roles for themselves, and that's very important. And so this concludes today's episode of Successful Philanthropy. Our guest today was Milan Breton, a true Renaissance man. He's a fashion designer, an ambassador, a performer, a wonderful all-round human being with a good heart. Thank you very much for joining. I'm Jean Shafiroff, your host, and I'll see you next week.